I had a, I want to call it a dream, but I'm not sure it was so much a dream as it was simply the Spirit of the Lord sharing a revelation with me this morning. And uh, in this, uh, I call it revelation because, you know, in a dream you just see uh, scenes play out in front of you. But in the course of this, uh, I was also hearing from the Lord, and the Lord was speaking to me as I was seeing certain things playing out. The Spirit of the Lord was speaking to me and expounding upon some things at the same time. And what he was showing me was that the current turmoil and trouble in our nation, because I'm going to talk plainly today, folks, so if you get offended very easily, then uh, you might want to change the channel or put on a safety belt. Because of the current turmoil and trouble and division in our nation, primarily caused by the religious right, the even white evangelical and fundamentalist churches support of one Donald J. Trump, who I can tell you in the Holy Ghost today, my friend, if you don't have discernment of spirits, then you better listen to somebody who does. That man is as demonic a human being, I kid you not, as any that I have ever laid my eyes on. When he first announced his run for presidency, I did not, I'm being honest, I didn't think one way or the other about it. I didn't think negative. I didn't think positive. I thought, well, you know, I know, having lived in New York City, I know he's considered a shyster and a fraud and a con man, but I also know that he has always espoused uh, liberal ideals, and he's always identified as a Democrat, you know, and I knew he, of course, was going to run as a Republican, but I thought, well, a lot of people don't understand, but Republicans out of New York are generally very, very, very um, middle of the road. They're neither hyper-conservative nor are they really liberal per se. They tend to be very socially liberal. They're supportive of the LGBT community. You know, they're supportive of uh, many of the more liberal social causes, but they tend to be very fiscally, you know, uh, conservative. So, um, Knowing that a New York Republican, as a rule, is not an enemy of a whole lot of people, really, you know, uh, I thought, well, let's see if, if he's going to claim to be a Republican. Let's see what uh, he's going to run on, you know, what he's going to have to say. I watched his announcement speech and could feel demonic powers from hell literally all over me. And I told Tommy, I said, oh my God, have mercy. I have been prophesying for decades that, and this is exactly what I had been prophesying. I had been prophesying for decades that there were white nationalist racist groups all over this country who were lying in wait, looking for an opportunity to stir up a second civil war based on race division. And I had been saying this for many years. I had warned for several years, while Obama was in office, I warned, 
as Obama leaves office, you are going to see all hell break loose in this country. You are going to see things happening like you have never seen before. That's what I said. I said, as Obama leaves office, you're going to see all hell break loose in this country. When I saw Mr. Trump give his very first speech announcing his candidacy, I could feel and detect a lying spirit emanating from him like none I have ever in my life, ever. And I've been around some lying spirits. I've known some people that had lying spirits. But this man's lying spirit, for a lot of people, they sell out to a lying spirit for the sake of attention. And, you know, they, they just tell enormously ridiculous stories and stuff to gain attention and what have you. But this man's lying spirit, I felt behind it a malicious spirit and a hateful spirit and an angry spirit and a spirit of division. Every one of the things I've just named are literal demons, folks. And for any one person to possess to be in possession of all this concoction of demonic spirits is beyond dangerous. The only person in history, and what I'm about to say is not hyperbole, do not play down what I'm about to say. I'm warning you, don't do it. The only person in history that I'm aware of who possessed as many demons of this sort and of this nature was Adolf Hitler. And after he gave his first speech, I looked at Tommy and I told Tommy, I said, Adolf Hitler has risen from the dead. I said, this man is literally using Hitler's playbook. Anyone who has ever studied history, anyone who has any knowledge of the tactics employed by Adolf Hitler, I said, this man is using Hitler's playbook. He literally is everything he's doing is in perfect keeping with the way Hitler did things. And I warned if he got into office what we were going to see, including, I said, you're going to see, um, you're going to see policies that are going to allow for hundreds of thousands of people to die. Legal genocide. Hitler engaged in genocide that, of course, you know, stirred up the anger of the world and, and made the world angry. I said, the Republican Party and Donald Trump will embrace policies whenever given the opportunity that are going to allow for tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people to die. Why, you say? Because all they care about is money. And they see elderly and sickly people as being a drain on our society and being a drain on our government. When I was driving Uber, I actually had a Republican attorney in my car one day, and he literally said to me, if somebody gets sick and they're going to die. He said, if they haven't worked hard enough in life to get a job where they've got insurance and stuff, then they need to die. 
They just need to die. That's what this man said to me in the car. He had told me he was a Republican and he was an attorney, an attorney. He said, they just need to die. He said, they're just a drain on society anyway. If they hadn't worked hard enough as if only people who work hard, you know, get to a place where they have insurances and stuff. I know people who work hard the whole life and can't get a job that gives them the kind of benefits they need. I, I was so appalled that I about wanted to pull my car over the side of the earth. I was on the highway in Dallas, and I'm not kidding. I came this close to pulling my car over the side of the road and kicking that donkey out onto the side of the street because his words offended me so badly. But I warned, I said, if Donald Trump gets into office, every opportunity that arises that will allow them to engage in what will be seen as perfectly legal and legitimate actions, but they're going to be actions that will cost tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people their lives. I said, because really what they're doing is they're embracing legal genocide is what it amounts to. Lo and behold, here came COVID. And Trump and the Republicans just stepped back and let it ravage, just let it tear up and destroy and kill. And who did it kill? Did it kill the strongest among us? Did it kill the wealthiest among us? No, it killed the poor, it killed the weak, it killed the elderly and the sickly. Folks, I'm here to tell you that was exactly what I had warned about. It was genocide. But because they were able to do it in a way that it just looked like, oops, you know, kind of like, a, well, it's just our policies didn't quite work as well as we had hoped they would, you know. No, there were many, many things that could have been said and could have been done that would have changed the outcome of that, and yet it was handled in such a horrific way because they were just as happy to see all these non-entities die. Now, I'm going to tell you something. There are a lot of people in the church world who are drinking the Kool-Aid. Most white evangelical and fundamentalist Christians are drinking the Kool-Aid and they're buying into the Trump cult and the mega cult, which is, I assure you, it is the new Nazi party. It absolutely is the new Nazi party. There's no question. First thing Hitler did when he was given access to power, he began to remake the judiciary. All of a sudden, he began to appoint judges all over the place who were going to be yes men. Donald Trump appointed more judges as quickly as he could because he had the full support of the Republican Senate so they were able to run him through like water. And one after another after another after another ideologues, people who were no more qualified for a federal bench than they were qualified to participate in the Olympics were being approved for federal judgeships all over the country throughout our federal system. You saw what was happening, folks. He was trying desperately to do exactly what Adolf Hitler did. Exactly. Adolf Hitler began to 
uh, implement policies that benefited the wealthy because he needed to get the richest in Germany behind him. Because when you're going to take a democracy and turn it into a dictatorship, you need to get the money behind you. Why? Well, because if anybody is going to have the power to finance a rebellion against you, it's going to be the money. So you want the big money people right square behind you. Okay, that's how you kind of ensure your position over the long haul. He began to deregulate and dismantle departments within the German government. And he began to do it at such a rate that it would be impossible for the next person if another election were to take place and someone else were to be elected, it would be impossible for them to fix what he had broken. Again, what that does is that serves as kind of a uh, insurance policy for the dictator. If I lay waste to all these departments and all these things, Nobody is going to know how to fix the mess that I make. And nobody's going to be able to come on the scene and say, hey, you know, Hitler destroyed everything, but I know how we can get everything back on track. No, the next person's going to come along and say, folks, he's destroyed everything, and we need to figure out how to fix it. Do you see what I'm saying? And this is exactly what the Republican Party and Donald Trump began to do. Thankfully, he is not nearly as brilliant as Adolf Hitler. Hitler was a brilliant man. Donald Trump is a class A moron. He is nowhere near as uh, intelligent and, you know, understanding. He knows nothing about how American government works. He knows nothing about the Constitution. He knows nothing about history, except according to his ex-wife, he kept a copy of Adolf Hitler's speeches in book form on his nightstand. And this was an interview she gave to Vanity Fair way back in 1992, long before he was ever announcing a bid for presidency. Why would she say that back in 92? Why would she say that? There are people in America most White evangelicals are drinking the Kool-Aid. They're letting their leaders tell them what to think and how to think. But there are many who are not. And those who are not are becoming very disgruntled with the church. They're becoming very unhappy in their churches. And they're beginning to look elsewhere for fellowship and for spiritual guidance and leadership. And what the Spirit of the Lord showed me today is he said, all of these disgruntled believers are moving backwards spiritually. He said, instead of progressing and moving forward, in their faith and moving forward in their understanding of correct, accurate, biblical doctrine. He said they're moving backwards. Instead of looking for a church that preaches the message of the cross as it ought to be preached, but does not preach Donald Trump, because those churches like ours are so rare and so hard to find, they're taking the lazy way out. 
and they are simply choosing instead to go to a Episcopal church or to go to a Catholic church or to go to some other mainline denomination where Trumpism and mega does not have the same hold it has on the fundamentalist and evangelical world. And this constitutes a spiritual mudslide. People are sliding backwards. And I said, dear God, this is horrible. This is horrific. And immediately the Spirit of the Lord reminded me that in the Word of God, he said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. He said, iniquity is not sin in the classic sense. Those of you who've been part of our Bible studies and all, you know what the, the most uh, classic, I, I guess you want to say, biblical definition of sin is. What is sin? Sin is violation of the law, right? Iniquity is not sin. The evangelical world, the fundamentalist world, will try to tell you that that passage is talking about because sin is running rampant, you know, because people are homosexuals and these people and abortion and blah, blah, blah. You know, the love of... No, 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 no. Iniquity is always, read your Bible, it's always identified with people, listen carefully now children, people who are not doing right. I'm not talking about breaking the law, I'm talking about they're not acting right, they're not behaving right. They're not doing right. They're not doing things the way the Lord would have them to be done. If you look at the Old Testament prophet, the word of the Lord said, these were the, listen, the iniquities of thy sister Sodom. And the prophet then went on to list what the iniquities of Sodom were. They were full of pride, fullness of bread. They had no concern for the poor, so on and so forth. You see, this was not a matter of simply breaking the law of God, but it was a matter of they weren't acting right. They were not behaving right. They weren't doing right. And what the Spirit of the Lord showed me this morning is, because so many in the church are full of iniquity. They're not doing right. They're not acting right. He said the love of many is growing cold. Many people are being turned off to the faith. Many people are finding themselves losing their faith and losing their confidence in God. And folks, I'm here to tell you, things are going to get rough in the next year or two. Things are going to get very, very difficult. I warned, I said, when, as I didn't know, when I was talking for, what, two or three years before Obama left office, I kept saying over and over again, as Obama leaves office, you're going to see all hell break loose in this country. So Trump wasn't even a figure yet, you know, in our imagination. He, he wasn't even on the scene yet. But I said, we are headed for a time in this country when we are going to experience a second civil war. 
it's going to happen. Because the enemy is not going to be north versus south, and therefore there are no clearly defined boundaries. There's no front line. It's based on race and ideology. It is going to be neighbor against neighbor. This is beyond dangerous. This, this goes so far beyond uh, the Civil War of the 1860s. It's not even funny. You're going to see guerrilla warfare being fought on American soil, otherwise known as homegrown terrorism. You're going to see assassinations of political figures. You're going to see assassinations of judges. You're going to see places being blown up and shot up based upon their beliefs and their viewpoints. That'll include things like uh, um, offices for political parties. And of course now, mind you, I'm not talking about Republican offices. That much you can bank on. But you're going to see Democratic offices, Democratic officers, Democratic um, uh, politicians and leaders in communities being assassinated. Folks, all hell is about to break loose in this country. The only hope we have at the moment, and I'm going to move on with the service once I've issued this warning, and I declare unto you, thus saith the Lord, this is not a drill, this is not a joke. I've been saying this for years. I literally have been, every word I'm saying, I've been saying for years. The only hope we have, we're, right now we're playing political musical chairs. And what is going to determine how this thing plays out is whether there is a Republican, not Trump, not Trump, a Republican, I'm saying it plainly, or a Democrat in the White House when it all comes down. If Trump winds up in, if a Republican, even if it's not Trump, winds up in the White House when all this mess starts, we've lost our democracy. It's that simple. You don't have to believe me, believe me. I've been prophesying my whole life, and I'm so used to people wanting to dismiss and, and just act like, you know, that preacher, he's only saying that because. I'm not only saying that because. If you think I'm stupid enough to get up here and say what I'm saying, just because, you know, I got a bee in my bonnet, you're out of your stinking mind. When the Spirit of God causes me to experience the kind of troubling vision that I had this morning, honey, I'm going to tell you, it, it just sets a fire in me that I don't even know what to do with. And I feel the need to shout a warning from the rooftops. We cannot afford, under any circumstances, look how many great 
major Republican figures, political figures have left the Republican Party in the last four years. Look how many major figures. And they've said the party has gone rogue. It, it's, it's not what it was at one time. Folks, that is the truth. <clears throat> the problem is the movement to subvert it has been going on since Fox News first went on the air. Fox News was part of their plan. You would have no Trump if it weren't for Fox News. You could not have had Hitler if it were not for his ability to churn out the propaganda, okay? If it weren't for his ability to continually tell the most outlandish lies known to man. And Hitler said, just keep repeating them. Hitler said, tell the biggest lie you can tell. He said, because the bigger the lie, the quicker people will buy it. Why? He said, because who can believe that, well, he can't possibly be lying, because who would possibly lie about something that enormous? Who could possibly lie about an election being stolen and about all this stuff going on to subvert the election? Who, could, who would do that? Nobody would do that, because as human beings, most people who don't have that lying demon can't even fathom somebody being willing to lie like that, you know? So therefore, when they're hearing somebody in a high position, people of authority, remember, it's not just Trump. He's got all his lackeys in Congress. He's got all his lackeys in the Senate telling the same lies, carrying the, why? They're working together, folks. This is not a Trump thing. This is something the Republican Party has had in the works for decades. And I've been prophesying that they had it in the work for decades. And when Donald Trump announced his candidacy, I said, this is their opportunity. This is the man they've been waiting for. Folks, no one who has even the slightest bit of decency or godliness in them stirs up division and hatred and malice and anger and angst among countrymen. This is something that God abhors. I don't care if you live in a communist country. Being divisive and being uh, someone who trades in violence and anger and angst and all this negativity and division, that is a strictly demonic trait. Nothing good can ever come out of that. God's people are called to be peacemakers. God's people are called to a ministry of reconciliation. That means we ought always, I remember when I was a kid, we ought always be striving to help uh, curate peace and cooperation and unity. That's what it means when it says we're called to a ministry of reconciliation. I remember when I was a kid, if ever there was a saint that walked the face of this earth, it was my great-grandmother. And do you know what? 
if there was a fight, if there was an argument between members of the family or between people, do you know what my grandmother did? She did not jump on one bandwagon or the other. No, no, no. She got right square in the middle and said, okay, now listen, you got to understand this and you got to understand that. And she would bring reconciliation. She would try to reconcile. She, and she was successful. <laughs> That's what God's people are called to do. When you have preachers out there preaching that the other people are evil, the other people are satanic, the other people are, are wicked, and the other people are this, and the other people are that. That is hardly of God. And the only reason that I'm warning concerning this one man is because this man is so full of demons that he is uniquely qualified and uniquely in a position to help the plan that a certain group within the Republican Party has had in the works now for 30 years or better. He is uniquely qualified to help them Realize that plan. And let me tell you what the Spirit of the Lord told me 20 years ago. Their plan was to discard the U.S. Constitution. They hate the Constitution because it does not serve them. The Constitution, folks, there's a reason why Roe versus Wade was the law of the land for 50 years because frankly that is the constitutional position to take a woman has power over her own body whether you like her decision or not whether you agree with her decision or not you cannot impose upon her your religious views no can't do that. But that was, in fact, the constitutional position. That, that, is, that was a correct decision. The Constitution does not serve the ends of those in this country who really want an oligarchy. They want the nation simply to be ruled by a chosen few. And guess who those chosen few are going to be? The hyper wealthy, the super rich. Do you know what's going to happen when they're in control? Everybody who's not hyper wealthy and super rich is going to be raked over the coals. You are going to become the working class, you're going to become the working ants, the soldier ants, as it were, in their machinery. All you're going to be is a means to an end for the wealthiest among us. You're going to see anything that costs them money thrown away, benefits thrown away, unions thrown away. Fair wage, throw it away. We don't need minimum wage, throw it away. We don't need any of that. Don't believe me? Well, then you go ahead like an idiot and vote for Donald Trump. And you put him in office, and then two years from now, you watch this video and see if every word I've said doesn't come to pass. Just watch and see. Minimum wage will be gone. Social Security will be gone. Medicare will be gone. Oh, but if Medicare were gone, people will die. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah, so what? Legalized genocide. If you can't afford health care, well, who cares if in America health care costs 10 times what it costs anywhere else? Who cares if in America prescriptions cost dozens of times more than they cost even in neighboring countries like Canada? And Mexico, who cares? Folks, we're in a very dangerous place right now. But what disturbs me more than the political quagmire that we're in is the spiritual mess that we're in. 
people are losing out with God, we are going to see backsliding like you have never seen backsliding. You are going to see the love of many waxing cold. You're going to see so many people turning to religious traditions that believe far less than what the Word of God teaches. They're moving backwards instead of forward. We need to be diligent, okay? All right, I'm going to try to move on, but I, I had this happen back in 2008. You remember? The Lord gave me a similar kind of an experience, and I prophesied that there was coming a economic disaster that was about to happen. And then what happened? The real estate market blew up and the bubble popped and everything happened. And all of a sudden, even in Dallas, businesses were closing and people were losing their jobs all over the country. Remember? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this preacher don't know what he's talking about. Anyway, let's go on with our service today. I love the Lord.